Thank you. Uh, so welcome everyone for this talk, though. That's a bit of an update on the um, community analytics uh, we've been working on uh, the past few years. Uh, but yeah, first, uh, I will let Christelle introduce herself. Uh, so my name is Christelle. I'm a computer engineering student, and I'm majoring in data science. I'm currently doing um, a data science uh, internship at Inyoka Consulting. And this is my second internship at Inuka. Uh, my first one was in 2019, and I was working on Comden with Kevin. And that's how I got to know KDE and Comden as well. That's pretty much So as for me, uh, so I'm one of the old timers uh, in KDE. Uh, uh, that's what they say, apparently. Uh, and so I started using it in the uh, nine years and only started few, to contribute a few years later. Uh, then I fell in love with the community and I've been helping around with KD Leaves and then KD Frameworks and also community stuff, which includes the setup, helping the setup of the KD manifesto. Uh, and so this effort uh, about community data analytics, uh, which we are going to talk about today. Uh, and as Christian mentioned, uh, I'm part of the uh, NUK Old Couture family. Uh, where we are doing uh, services run software, uh, and I live uh, in Toulouse still. I'm not going to move from there. All right, so let's start with uh, with that particular talk. And so, um, what happened previously, right? So you're used to that. Always a bit of history with me. Um, and so that start with that guy and his ridiculous dog. Um, and he's been taking over uh, an idea from Adrian de Goot, uh, which was named the Green Blobs <laughs> uh, back then. And he wrote something named uh, GitViz uh, and made the Blobs blue. Um, so he did a few interesting talks for us, uh, his dear Paul Adams uh, in our community. He kind of retired in 2017, uh, and now he prefers to have fun with his dog, apparently. Uh, so that's when I came in the picture. Uh, I basically fought Gidviz. Uh, well, I asked him first if he was fine with that and so on. And basically, he gave me the, the code and I uh, expanded it quite a bit. Uh, so I reused mostly the Git parsing code, uh, but then most of the dependencies I swapped with something else. So I changed for Pandas for the data processing, uh, NetworkX for the graph analysis, and Bokeh for the actual output, uh, which gives us, as we will see uh, in this talk, better, uh, better visualization. Um, I also added some ways to clean up the data with rules, uh, which is, I mean, important, right, uh, for identifying people, for instance, when people are not necessarily consistent in the way they commit the name they used. Uh, then a bunch more uh, visualizations. And the big advantage of Bokeh is that we have more interactivity in the visualizations. So unfortunately, that's a PDF, so we won't be able to see that today. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, you are able to zoom in and out and plan and everything, which makes it much easier to actually explore the results. Um, so a few examples of what we do. Uh, so you might have seen that on my uh, on my blog, for instance. So that one is one of the simplest one to understand, right? That's basically week per week, uh, the commit, ca commit count and the uh, number of unique committers, uh, which gives you an approximation of the um, team size uh, each week, right, uh, in the community. And so you can see that uh, evolve over time and then get a trend. Then we got the activity plot, uh, which is the one uh, truly inherited from Paul. Um, and now it's basically yeah, colorful because we have more thresholds for the, uh, for the activity. So each line is uh, a contributor, and then it's, each column is a week. And then you get a color depending on how active you've been. Um, and the last thing that all the contributors are sorted by the first commit date. Uh, which is interesting because this way you see people coming in the picture, right? So you get that envelope there, which gives you an idea of how much you're recruiting. Uh, and then, uh, so that the envelope I'm talking about, I totally forgot about that red dot. And then inside of this area, the denser it is, the more attention you get, right? Because that means the more people who came in actually contribute 
for a long while. Uh, otherwise, you get like here, like a one shot, and then the person disappears, right? Um, and then we also have the contributor network. So for that one, we basically plot a network uh, to get an idea of who collaborates with whom. Uh, and that's based on uh, when we're looking at the commits, that's based on the assumption that if they touch the same file, there's uh, a chance of some communication happening at some point uh, so that they don't step on each other's toes. Uh, and so we basically draw a line between those two persons. And that one is the hardest one to read, uh, so that the centrality for a particular person. Because as soon as you can do plots like this, you can tell if a person is very central in the graph or not, right? So we color coded the nodes so that one is fairly central, for instance. Uh, and, but that's a picture at a given point in time. Now, if you rinse and repeat that for, I don't know, every week or every month, you can see for a particular person that value evolve, and that's what we are plotting there. Uh, so the blue line here, that's basically the centrality of that particular person, which happens to be Volker Krauss, uh, who is in the other room right now. Uh, so that the centrality of that particular person over time, uh, and so you can see that it can be fairly central and then a bit less, right? Um, and correlated to this, we show also the uh, activity, so that is the number of commits. Everything is normalized though, so that's why it goes all the way to one and zero. Um, and one thing we have realized is that if the team is small and you have a lot of activity, then you get fairly central quickly, right? So we also show the team size uh, because that you can draw conclusion of that blue curve only at periods of times where the team size is somewhat constant. So around here, we can draw a conclusion, but it, in there, right, it's kind of shrinking. So we cannot draw any real conclusion about that spike, right, or, or that one. But there, we can start to do some conclusions. So uh, that's a quick recap of things I've been talking about in the past. Um, and then there's kind of an open question. Is that just a fun puzzle, Kevin, right? Why do you do this? Uh, well, it's definitely a fun puzzle, uh, I won't lie, um, but not only, right? Um, because that that's a way for us to show also if a community is healthy. Um, because of the activity level, right? As I mentioned, we see if we recruit people, if we if people stays around or not, right? Uh, if we have a large or small burst factor for particular teams, uh, we can also see the team structure. We can also see team splitting, uh, which I didn't quite explain here, but I wrote a blog about that. Um, and there are also actually professional uses. Uh, I've been using that, for instance, for um, framing technical projects uh, at customers when they wonder, yeah, what should I pick as a dependency, right? Uh, some of the reasons for picking something are technical. Some of them are more because of the community. Um, and also, Interestingly, you can audit the actual customer code with these kind of tools, and you find some funny facts sometimes. Um, so that's, yeah, what I said pretty much. Um, right, so especially for the code editing, it makes it easier to explore the project history, uh, or also to, to evaluate the developer's turnover, right, uh, inside of a team uh, at a customer. Uh, and that also helps you find out how the team is structured, right? And who owns which part of the code, for instance, and who works with whom, uh, these kind of uh, answers you can get, and that can be yeah, fairly important for customers. Um, and you can identify the key people on a particular project. Right? Uh, I mean, if you start looking at those graphs uh, after a few hours or a few days, you, you basically know everyone on the project. All right, and with that, so we're going to expand the view and I'm going to let Christelle continue with this. Um, okay, so what's new? Um, what's new is that we've added um, data sources. So it's not only about the code commits anymore. Uh, we, found, we find that the code commits are, are not capturing like everything about projects. So we thought about adding new new sources like like merge requests, issues, and uh, 
uh, mailing list and that's where that's pretty much what I did during my internship uh, so uh, Camden was a, a bunch of uh, Python scripts it was a, a couple of scripts for like centrality and activity and all of that and well my work on it was essentially to make it more user friendly and easier to use so we turned it into a Python API which makes it easier to, to, to handle and to re to, to, to reproduce results and all of that. So, so it works like this. You have Camden, which is the library, and and you can you use it to, to do all sorts of things. You can parse repositories, and then you get a pandas data frame that you can use with certain functions and with pretty much all functions. So, so you don't have to just use it with activity. You can use it with network and then parse it once, and then you can display it with like, uh, with a different uh, with different characteristics and all of that. So what are the new data sources? We have mailing lists. So uh, mailing lists are a pretty pretty common way to, to to discuss things and bugs and reports and all of that in teams and it was it was pretty widely used in developer communities a couple of years ago. now it's it's more now there are different ways to, 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 to discuss things but it was it was pretty common so we thought about adding that it's pretty much it's not very common anymore so we might not use it in practice but but it's pretty interesting to look at the history uh, we also have GitLab GitLab discussions which are issues and merge requests and we thought that'd be interesting uh, because this is where the discussion around code happens and this is uh, this this allows us to look at things that we didn't look at before, at how how, peop, how central people are to like to contributing differently and not just code. And this leads to a new metric, which is the responsiveness, like how much how responsive a team is. So eventually, we potentially this will allow for aggregate aggregated views. So, uh, for example, we can we can combine commits graphs and merge requests graphs to, to have a fuller idea and things like that to have to have a better view of the community a better idea a better image oh i also forgot to say i'm sorry that it's not it's not it's not easy to map a, a commit authors to gitlab users so so that's something we're pretty we're, we're still we hope to work on but uh, we eventually want to, to, to get to a point where we can combine all sorts of views for different data sources. So uh, what about our data set? Here we're, we're, talk, we're going to talk about like what's happening with the community. So we have a data set that we're going to analyze. And what is it? So it's, it's constituted of, of all the KDE repositories. So yeah, all 950 plus of them, and even the ones that are unmaintained because we think they offer pretty interesting insight. And well, we're using the we're using the the feature in Comdan that allows us to 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 program some rules and then apply them to 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 our data while processing them. So that's the rule set, and this allows us to handle big offenders that have um, names that commit from different names like. Laurent Motel, for example, commits from Laurent Motel and Motel Laurent, and we we with rule sets we can we can uh, we can uh, we can we can make sure that this is going to be the same person that's committing, and this this helps us reduce biases in our statistics. So when it comes to KDE as a whole, uh, well, this is an update. This is the activity, the all-time activity of commits, commits only. So a couple of points are. are pretty much stand out like there's Laurent Montel that's been active ever since 1999 he's right here so we zoomed in previously and we saw his name right here and he's been pretty active uh ever since 1999 he's got orange colors right here so that's that's uh, more active than than the average and then we have inflection points like one right here and one right here and these inflection points point out to faster recruiting after 2010 right here and faster recruiting in the last couple of years but we we have less retention like uh, yellow here is less dense so people are are not staying they're not always contributing but it's getting better 
And here it's more dense. So the people that joined in the last couple of years are still here. And as from 2017, uh, well, this is the zoomed in graph. This starts from 2017. And, and we thought there, there are some people that have been active contributors and like we'd like to mention them. I'm sorry if I'm going to butcher their names. I, I don't intend to, but here we go. There is Agatha Kako, there is Ahmed Samir, there is Alexander Leno, there is Alexander Stipic or Stipic. Camilo Higuita, Carl Sean, David Redondo, Devin Lin, Han Young, Jan Blackwell, Jonah Bruckert, Mevan Carr, uh, Nate Graham, Nicholas Feller, Noah Davis, Sharaf Zaman, Vlad Zahorodny, and Wakar Ahmed. And well, you guys are pretty like are pretty active contributors, and thank you for your work. So, what about merge requests? Uh, this is the activity for merge requests, and it's obviously, obviously more recent. We have less history. Here we start at around uh, 2018. So the K KDE moved on to GitLab pretty recently, and we don't have GitLab merge requests from before that, so that's it's pretty obvious. But there are some things we can we can we can learn. Like uh, here, there's an inflection point, so so people have been more active on merge requests. We see people appear like Xavier Huggle and Michael Johnson. They're pretty active on merge requests. So uh, why didn't we spot there? There's an interesting question here. We didn't spot them on commit activity, but we're spotting them here. So, so that could be related to the fact that they're more they're more active uh, discussing code, but not necessarily contributing it. And that's, for example, another another position in the open source community where you don't necessarily contribute a lot of code but like guide the development of features and things like that and when it comes to the team side <clears throat> excuse me um here we have the the uh the entry count in blue and then you have the team size in orange and this is the peak that was uh the nokia peak that's in 2010 so i th i'm i think this is when Nokia bought Qt, so that's that. And then we have a bit of stabilization right here. And then it picks up again. So in 2019, 2020, we have the entry count that clearly picks up. Then we have a trend that's pretty positive for, for the number of developers that are active, the number of contributors. And well, for, for merge requests, we clearly have, um, we, we clearly have a, like, a growing trend but the thing is we don't have enough data to, to, to have a more precise or intelligent insight so so what we really get from this graph is that we need more data and well as as for the new metric for merge requests this is the responsive where in orange we have the response time in hours so here is a lot of hours for uh, for response time and convert not much. Uh, so people are becoming more reactive to merge requests, which is a pretty good sign. Uh, it took some time, but but we're there. And then you have we have the blue shape right here. This is bars that that pretty much that re represented the start of, of unanswered merge requests. So we can see that it's growing, and that could be due to the fact that it's still recent in 2021. Uh, but that's that. This is the, the stock of unanswered merge requests. Now, it's important to know that the history of, of uh, the history for uh, merge requests goes a bit before the instance existed, which is counterintuitive, because before the instance existed, how can we have things like that? Well, this is because Caden got important with all of its history, and well, it's been excluded to to produce this this plot. Okay, and um, this is the network for commits. So uh, this shows the centrality of users, as Kevin previously explained. So we have some users that that are very central. So the top would be Laurent Montel, uh, Alexander Leno. 
Nicholas Falle, Carl Schaan, and Heiko Becker. And they're pretty central. Their, their node is like in black or very dark purple. And well, uh, for merge requests, we also see there are people that are very central. And we see the same people that come back, like Nicholas Falle. We also see Graham, Alexander Leno, Ahmed Samir, and the next Alex Paul. Something that's interesting is that Laurent is nowhere to be seen. We see him, we see that he's very, very central for the net for the commits network, but he's he's not very central when it comes to GitLab, GitLab merge requests. Uh, which pretty much shows a couple of things. Uh, first is that he he's he's contributing code, but he's not necessarily discussing features that he's contributing with a lot of people. So he could be uh, developing things in his corner. And well, the the for example, uh, changing changing the script for coding or changing certain loops, writing them another way. Uh, but the other thing that we can see is that uh, commits on their own aren't enough to really tell if someone is central to the community. But then let's zoom out a bit. Uh, this is the 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 subnetwork for Krita. This is where Krita enters the scene. And we have right here a person that's very central. And this person is Hala Remt, who answers a lot of merge requests and, and pretty much is very active within Krita. And on to Kevin. All right. So let's continue with this. Um, so obviously, what we've been seeing with Christel, uh, that's the community as a whole, right? But then sometimes you also need to look at sub parts, right? To make sure that you're not mistaking, you know, the forest for the tree. Eh? Um, and so we looked at two uh, other examples to try to see if there were other phenomena we could spot in there. Uh, so one of them is KD framework. So, um, basically, we did everything, then a focus on frameworks, and then we'll have a focus on Krita because we've seen that interesting fact with the sub-network there. Um, so for the all-time activity, so I'm sorry because this one with the colors, unfortunately, is slightly harder to read than the previous one because there's a bit less density in yellow, right? Uh, but if you look closely, you see that the profile um, is very similar to the whole KD, right? Uh, there are two inflection, inflection points, though, um, which don't match the ones we've seen for the whole community, because there's one which is before um, 2010, uh, and which is likely the KD3, KD4 transition, where a lot of people, uh, it's actually fairly sharp, right? Uh, where a lot of people actually jumped in to help with that transition uh, in KD libs. And we'll so see another one around 2014, that's actually uh, the year that we released the first uh, KD Frameworks 5. Uh, for the activity, uh, um, we could, Yep. For the activity, we can also zoom in like we did. And so I did uh, a zoom there where uh, we are basically focusing on the main recruits <laughs> around that period, uh, which I actually managed to get on the same graph, but one at the top, one at the bottom. Uh, no meaning to that. Uh, but that's pretty much so Ahmad Zamir um, getting very active and Alexander uh, Luno as well. So from uh, 2018 and 2020. Um, right, and then we have the all-time activity, but for the merge requests. And we see uh, toward the top, you might see that there's gives that feeling of a thicker line, but that's not a thicker line. It's actually two lines which are very active around the same time. And if you look at who that is, that's pretty much David for and Hamad Samir, right? So you can see that they are talking to each other quite a lot, right? Because they seem to send messages around the same time. Um, then for the all-time team size, uh, we see a very clear ramp up uh, for Frameworks 5, right? Both in activity and team size. Um, and we also see an exhaustion phase, right? Uh, around here. Um, and, and that's pretty much why we work toward KD Frameworks 5, then it's released, and then there's a deep in activity, right? Everyone tries to recover, and then it ramps up again. Um, and clearly, it's be picking up quite uh, some 
some pace uh, since a couple of years. Um, open questions there, but it could be actually the development model of KD Frameworks 5, right? Before that was KD Libs, then we changed the development model, kind of uh, paying off. Uh, that ramp up, that could also be uh, the preparations for KF6, which are ongoing right now. So again, that uh, increase, and that could be actually both, right? So then you get a compound uh, effect. Uh, right, for that we cannot say much, right? Clearly for this kind of stuff we need more data at that point. Uh, for the responsiveness, similar profile uh, than the world community, uh, we see it's very slow at the beginning and then it picks up. Um, it, it kind of converges. Back, uh, but there's slower responsiveness though, uh, on average. Uh, it's three days to a week on average and uh, on average on the community it's yeah more around two or three days. For the network, so we get the East Rentality top five again uh, for the commits. So Hamad Sami, Frederic Cosbo, Alexander Lono, Laurent Montel, Nicolas Fela, right? And no David Four, right? Everyone is surprised there. Uh, well, because you see David Four more in the top five for the merge request, right? Uh, we have the same effect around uh, Laurent Montel again. That's because Laurent commits in plenty of files. So with the assumption of Touching the same file, you collaborate, right? Then he shows up in the previous one, but he's not very active on the merge request, actually discussing stuff. Uh, he's doing, I mean, a lot of cleanups, which are very important, but then it's not really part of the decision making, uh, which happens in the merge request. So it doesn't show up. But then we see David for showing up again. So he's all very much managerial now, right? All right. And now quickly, because we don't have that much time left. Uh, uh, a zoom on Krita itself, right? So very big community, right? Sub part and now just a team for a particular software. Um, so that's interesting again. If you look at that one, so the profile kind of similar a bit, but it seems to recruit faster on average than uh, the world of KDE, right? So it recruits faster. That being said, right? If it's hard to read, that's because here we don't have that much density. So it seems to have um, faster recruiting on average to the world of KD, but at the same time, the price of that maybe is to have a lower retention, right? So it has a lower retention uh, on average than the rest of KD. Uh, if we go for the uh, focus on the recruits from the past uh, couple of years, uh, that's mostly Ion, O'Neill, uh, Agatha uh, Kako, Sharaf the Man, and Dave Flu. Uh, for the um, merge requests, uh, clearly Dimitri Kazakov and Ala Ramp, uh, they are like top of the game, right? Uh, so they're clearly the decision maker uh, among, uh, among that team. Uh, again, we see the Nokia, Nokia peak uh, because that was very much a big thing for uh, Krita back then uh, when it was part of Caligra. Um, and since then though, so they are the peak, they had stabilization phase, but clearly it's growing. Uh, and it started to grow a bit earlier um, than KD as a whole after the Nokia peak. Um, but then that team growth uh, is, uh, is a bit slower. Right? There, there's more uh, increase on the, on the count of commits. All right, yeah. More data, please, right? So we'll do that again in a couple of more years and that might be more interesting. Uh, very interesting with Krita though, is the all-time uh, responsiveness on the merge request. So it's similar to the KD community for the, uh, for the responsiveness. We see it's slow in the beginning and then it converges, uh, which is normal, right? Adaptation to a new tool being introduced. Um, one thing they do super well though is they are very tidy on the unanswered stock, right? Because they are virtually no stock. What's registered there that just the last weeks, right, of the story. So that's normal that you have stuff which is unanswered uh, of their re uh, recent. Uh, one thing we spotted though, which is surprising to us and we have no good explanation for this is that one. Uh, we see that it starts to converge, right? But then there are these yeah, peak uh, in 2020. It, it's unclear to us why. Uh, and if someone has an insight about that, uh, it's very welcome. I would like to know actually uh, why they could have been this uh, phenomenon. 
For the network, so Centrality Top 5, Dintry Kazakov, Alvin Wong, Ala Ramt, Charles Baman, and Eorin O'Neill, uh, names that we heard before. Uh, on the uh, merge request, though, uh, we see Volterra appearing uh, with not on the, on the commit. Uh, so apparently a bit more in the conversations and a bit less in the volume of commits at least. All right, so we're almost uh, at the end. I I had to go a bit quickly on that part <laughs> to give some time for uh, this and then uh, the conclusion. Um, so there's a name, I mean, there's a name that we heard quite a bit, uh, except in the part of uh, on Krita uh, in, in the community. So uh, with uh, Hamad Samir, right, who's been fairly active, uh, we see him, I mean, he registers at the world community level, he registers on KD frameworks. Um, and so we thought that could be a good case, even though the plot is not super <laughs> interesting in a way, but that was a good case to um, try with the, um, uh, with the centrality uh, metric, which I was talking about earlier. So as a reminder, you should basically trust so that uh, should basically trust only when this plateaus, okay? So the data before that, because the team size is still growing, you cannot really draw any conclusion uh, on that part. Uh, that plot has been produced uh, with the KD Frameworks merge request data set, okay? And only that part. Um, and then we can see with the uh, orange line, which is the centrality level, we can see that basically, Hamad is like just shooting right through uh, that ramp up of the team and whatever happens uh, with the team and the activity is just growing and growing in the centrality. Uh, so I think that's actually a name we should count, um, we should count with uh, if he keeps at it uh, like that. Uh, he's hell bent on being very, very central to KD frameworks in particular. All right, and with that, I leave you with Christelle again for the conclusion. Uh, so, when it comes to the metrics, we've noticed that it's, um, we actually think that it's interesting to have the conversation during code reviews, not just the contributors of the code, but also the merge requests and all of that, because it allows us to capture a bit how people behave in general, what's their role, and especially for senior developers and how they evolve. We see uh, David Faure that has assumed a more managerial position, whereas, uh, uh, Laurent Montel is contributing code and then making cleanups and all of that. So it's very, it's two different, it's two different approaches. It's very senior de developers and and it's 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 something that we've only been able to see as we've combined two views for metrics. Well, as I said, commits are on their own probably aren't enough to really evaluate someone's centrality. And well, a single metric, well there's too much bias in a single metric. So, so it's important to have, to look at generally how the community behaves. And well, as for the community, it has a complex history with a couple of decompression phases. that are visible, but it's healthy overall. Recru recruiting is going well, and well, retention picks up in the last couple of years. Uh, for some projects, um, they have their own trends, but it's pretty close to the whole. Well, at least where we've looked, but but as a whole, the community is very healthy. And finally, GitLab seems to be very big for KDE. People, MRs are picking up, and well, we look forward to to a couple of more years later. We'd have more data, and then maybe look at more insights. And finally, what's what's in the card for us for a come then? Uh, we believe there is some work that still needs to be done on on the responsiveness plot. And well, we'd like to find ways to, to match GitLab accounts to commit authors to be able to combine different views for commits and merge requests. That would be interesting, as I said before. And finally, maybe even have a way to customize weights and activities and network edges. So maybe contributing a, a whole new feature would be something that has a bigger weight than contributing something that's very minor. So that's it for us. Thank you for listening. And um, any questions? Hi. Thank you very much uh, for this talk. We have five minutes for questions, and we have questions coming in. 
right on time. <laughs> I can I can uh, I can read you uh, those. So David Redondo asks in the chat we th thought that Heiko Becker was maybe in the top because he does the version increases. Shouldn't such commits be excluded since they somewhat distort the picture? Want to give a shot at it, Christelle, or, or I go with that? Uh, were you, did you say I should give it a shot? Yeah, do you want or... to answer that or I go for it? Oh, uh, you can go for it, that's okay. All right, uh, so yes. <laughs> Uh, one of the reasons, uh, so definitely, uh, that's definitely something where you want to actually exclude those. Uh, it was easier, I mean, because we had stuff like this, right? But that used to be under different accounts or that used to be uh, via the account of a bot doing this, right? I remember, for instance, David Ford doing this kind of release work uh, and you don't see the commits coming really from him. Um, so then they have a very well known name, uh, which is bot name. And for those bots, we actually have exclude uh, rules. In this case, that's actually harder because you don't want to remove him completely from the picture as well. So you cannot just say, well, that's him. So we just shoot his commits out and we don't display them. Uh, so definitely, yes, that skews a bit the picture and that makes things uh, a bit harder um, because you cannot separate between these two activities fairly easily, right? Okay, thank you. Uh, we have uh, another question, again, from David Redondo. For the GitLab stats, I think it would make sense to keep in mind that only some projects moved to it in the beginning, and then the bulk did only start using it later. Yes, uh, that's what we try to show, right? When you see that big break in the trend, uh, that's actually what we were trying to point at, right? You would see uh, that in the beginning it was just ramping up, and then suddenly you see like everyone else coming in, right? Um, so yeah, that definitely shows. Okay, and last one. Do you think, uh, also from David Redondo, by the way, do you, think he, do you think it's possible to extract certain roles from the data, for example, querying for developers who do more of a managerial role, like uh, David Huar? Uh, I'm not sure I got the question correctly. So I, I think just looking at the data, can you I don't know, have a query that segregates uh, people into managerial roles and another? or different roles that you even didn't think about yet? Um, I think that's doable to make scripts which actually detects right based on some profile. Um, in, in that particular case, that's in a way easy, right? <laughs> um, because there's a strong disconnect between the centrality when you look at the commit and the centrality uh, when you look at the match request, right? So if you compare those over time and you see that diverge in some direction, then you can say clearly the role of that person is changing, right? Uh, as long as the trend stays parallel, you cannot say much. 